Hi everyone, Dee here. Welcome to Homestead Rewind. Today I'm going to make some blackberry syrup. But first, let me tell you where these blackberries came from. So I'm out here today with my good friend, one of my best friends, Caroline, who has developed this fantastic blackberry farm. All these plants that you see back here are blackberries and we're going to go pick some of them. <laughs> How can you be picky with so many around? Pretty amazing, huh? I think she has 10 acres like that. And we didn't even get to nearly half of all of where the blackberries were. So let me just start by saying that. I took those blackberries that we picked and I got about a gallon of them. It filled a gallon size bag. And I soaked them for a few hours in a little uh, bit of salt water. And then I put them in the freezer. Now I'm back here at the farm and I'm going to turn them into blackberry syrup so we can put it on our pancakes. I've got those blackberries out of the freezer and I put them in a pot and I'm going to bring them up to a boil and then I'm gonna turn them down and let them simmer so I can try and get all the good juice out of them. Okay, so while the blackberries are simmering and getting popping open so that all that juice will come out, I wanna talk about my setup here. This is an old strainer that I've had for a long, long time. I love this thing. I've used it more than any other canning utensil ever. And it, ha it has the mallet. I, was, I feel really lucky to have one of these because I've looked for them and they're pretty expensive nowadays. I think I got this one at a garage sale, I mean, way back in my 20s. But anyway, this is cheesecloth and it's all natural cheesecloth. Um, I buy my cheesecloth from the Amish. They sell it in their little store there. And I'm just going to press that like that. And now I'm set up and ready for those blackberries so that I can put them in here and squish them all down and get all the good juice out of them. I'll have to put something underneath there first. Okay, they're up to a boil and I'm just going to let them get real nice and hot. I'm squishing them down with my potato smasher, strawberry smasher, and as soon as that gets to a rolling boil, I'm going to turn it completely down to low and let it sit there and simmer for about 10 minutes or so. I'm ready to pour it in. I did get a glass mixing bowl underneath there. got to be careful, it splashes everywhere. Perfect fit. Now I'm gonna rinse this pot out while that drains. Now I wanted to tell you that the recipe says that you can add like two thirds a cup of water without it really making it too diluted. But we don't, you know, that's just to make your blackberries stretch a little farther. But we don't eat a lot of syrup and most of this is gonna go probably as gifts. So I want it to be as blackberry flavored as I can get. Now you'll see I'm, I'm smushing it down with my mallet. 
I'm just trying to get all that juice out of the berries. And you just keep, it's a mill, it, you just keep grinding it around. And you just keep working on that until you think you've got all the juice that you can extract out. It's starting to turn into a paste here. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to let that drain. <clears throat> Set that aside here first. Wipe my counter off. I'm a clean as I go kind of person. And it too, it, it will stay in your countertop if you don't have, if you have certain kinds of countertops. Hey, that's still dripping pretty good. Normally, I would be using raw cane sugar for this recipe, but I am at the farmhouse and I don't have any on hand down here. So I'm just using regular sugar. And it's two and a half cups of regular sugar. While this is dripping out, I measured out my sugar. I've got my lemon juice handy. And I've got my pectin. Now, I buy this at the Amish store up the road in the bulk. So six tablespoons is the equivalent of one box of pectin like you would buy in the store. Okay, so now I have everything ready. Let's check. It's about finished dripping, I think. So I'm going to take this out. Okay, so now I'm ready to put my juice back in my pot. And return my pot to the stove. Okay, so I actually dropped my cheesecloth in and had to go back through and restrain it. And I just wanted to show you that I got four cups of juice without putting any extra water in there. So I'm going to pour that in there, turn it on high, and bring it to a boil. So that is getting ready to start boiling again. I want to go ahead and put my sugar in a little at a time so it doesn't crystal up. I'm stirring as I put that sugar in. And I'm going to put two teaspoons of lemon juice in. And the recipe that I use says that you need to use bottled, bottled lemon juice, not fresh squeezed, if you're going to uh, can them, can your jars. Water bath is what it'll be. I'm only doing the syrup today. I will wait until I get back up to the camper where I have my water bath canner and finish canning the jars. So we're gonna bring that to a boil. And we're gonna let that boil for three minutes. Okay, so as you could see, that was getting away from me. I had to actually turn the heat down on it. I should have known that. This is what I mean about relearning things that I haven't done in a long time. I'm just giving it a stir every now and then. I may have turned it down too low. Let's bring it up a little bit more. just want to keep it boiling. Another issue is I'm trying to cook on an electric stove and the camper is gas and I'm out of that electric habit. When I have my tiny house, I'm definitely going to use propane, not electricity. Okay everyone, as you can see, I'm back at the camper again. Um, I've lost my footage. I don't know if I forgot to turn the camera on. This happens a lot whenever I'm trying to do a cooking video, which is why you don't see a lot of cooking videos from me, especially whenever I'm cooking something that requires such a close eye on time. So what ended up happening, and that was close to a disaster, I won't lie, I had got to messing with my camera and my 
syrup just about boiled over all over that electric stove. That would have been a terrible disaster and really hard to clean. Luckily, I caught it in time enough and was able to get it simmered back down. But I ended up going ahead and putting in three tablespoons of the pectin. And you have to cook that for one minute after you put that in there and bring it back to a boil. And I did get my syrup and I did get it jarred up. I also was able to find a good sized pot with a lid because these were just little uh, like jelly jars. They weren't, they weren't like a quart jar or anything. And I could fit them down inside and into the water bath of that and went ahead and processed them for 15 minutes. Sometime in the future, I will show you how I do my water bath canning um, and what types of things I do can. It may be a little while down the road because bouncing back and forth from here to the farmhouse is getting to be wearing on me. And I know that in October is going to be a really busy month up here at the campground because my boss loves Halloween. We have trick or treating every week, every weekend. I do have a couple of videos coming up, um, so stay tuned for those. I'm so anxious for you guys to see what is crossing our property when we're not there. And I also recently took on some plants from a friend who had to leave the park and she didn't want to take all these big plants with her to try to figure out how to trailer them down there. And so she asked me if I wanted them and I got some really exciting plants added to my camper jungle out here. I'll be doing a video on that here shortly and show you all the food that I've been getting from my camper garden. I guess I'm going to wrap it up for today. Thank you all so much for watching my videos. And if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe and push that little notification bell. I'll be uploading plenty more videos in the future. Until next time, love and peace. Mm -hmm.